I don't think one has to worry too much about how we define it. Um, clearly, biology um, has changed over the years. There are things that we have to do using computational approaches um, and algorithmic approaches. Slowly over time, I think all biologists are going to rely more and more uh, on computers and computational analysis than just uh, test tubes and petri dishes. Um, so in some ways, it's a natural f movement of phenomena of biology um, reflecting really that cells, human cells, eukaryotic cells, are some of the most complex things in the known universe. And really to be understanding them and analyzing them, um, we're going to have to draw on a, a lot of computational approaches and com computational modeling and storing our data in large uh, disk arrays and, and using disk farms and, and, and compute farms to actually um, analyze the data that we're generating. Um, some, some eminent bioinformaticians have said that maybe the term would just go away and, and, and really it's just another way of saying biology. My interest was really piqued by the idea of DNA as just storing information. And, and we were getting to grips with the kind of the size of the amount of information that was in the genomes. And I was just so intrigued by what is in these genomes. Um, and, and wanted to study the genome just for the genome's sake, just to find out what information was there. And so that's what made me jump from biochemistry into genetics. And I went to mm -hmm. Simon Fraser University um, to study genetics. And there's a laboratory there, uh, Professor David Bailey, who, who was doing something I really wanted to do, which was just look at the genome for the genome's sake, to look at what is the information that was there. Around that time, the genome project, the human genome project was starting, but it was embarking on model organisms first, much more tractable, smaller genomes. And so C. elegans, which was the organism I worked on, was one of those chosen to be sequenced. That's essentially why I ended up doing bioinformatics, and, and it wasn't really a bioinformatics. Bioinformatics as a field didn't really exist when I started to do that. Well, the, the, the big projects currently are really that we can now go into human cancers um, and characterize all the genetic changes that have accrued within those cells during the, 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 the uh, onset of the disease. So really this is opening up the whole disease to a level um, of interrogation that we've never had before. And that's giving us huge insights into ways in which we can come up with better um, prognostics for disease, better diagnostics, and certainly, um, hopefully as well, better, better therapeutics. At this point, you know, we've just started with our first tumors, we've, we've got uh, tumors uh, probably in the tens now from, from, from different sites. And I think as we build up to getting maybe samples in, in, a, in a, or completed genomes of say a hundred different breast cancers or a or hundred different thyroid cancers, um, that's going to give us um, some real uh, powerful statements to, set, to, to say about what kind of molecular changes the patients have. And should those changes correlate with different therapeutics or different different strategies. You know, can we make sure that, that um, every patient gets the personalized approach to curing their tumor um, that the, the molecular biology suggests? Cancer is obviously a huge healthcare issue um, and obviously hits many people at a very personal level. Uh, there's huge impetus um, to apply bioinformatics tools, um, DNA sequencing technologies to really trying to understand the molecular mechanisms within cancer. Um, so with that impetus, I mean, what other things th that we can learn, I, I, I guess what, another question is what, are the, what could be the benefits from that effort? We're studying cancer at the DNA level, but, but all organisms have DNA. Um, and so, you know, we have lots of examples where, you know, some of the pipelines we've created to study human cells, you know, we've been able to apply um, in other fields, in, in, in forestry, in fisheries, um, some of the assembly algorithms that we were developing here to look at um, what we call translocation breakpoints in human tumors. 
um, we were actually successfully able to use to assemble the fungus which the mountain pine beetle actually injects into the trees um, as they move from tree to tree and it's the fungus that contributes part of the pathogenicity uh, or the death um, of, of the tree. The fact that we're dealing with DNA um, means that we can transfer these skills actually quite easily from, from different fields. Just realize you know that where biology is taking us and, 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 and bioinformatics and you know the potential is huge in terms of healthcare now that we have you know the technology um, to sequence uh, complete genomes um, and we have a complete human reference genome for instance that we can base all our studies on. There's just a huge amount of analysis to be done um, either in the wet lab um, or computationally.